What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be installing the RCI skid plate. It's been something I wanted to add on to the truck for a while now and I finally pulled the trigger and got it just to give the, little, the truck a little bit of extra protection underneath there. Um, we all know the factory skid plate from Toyota on the Tundra is questionable at best. So we're going to go ahead and throw this RCI on. Um, pretty straightforward install but I figured I'd show it to you guys anyway. We do have the diff drop on the truck with the lift. Um, so it, they did include spacers with, with this to make it fit so it didn't rub on anything. So let me get this thing unboxed, I'll show it to you and uh, we'll get it thrown up on the truck. All right, guys, we got it unpackaged here. As you can see, beautiful black powder coated finish. First impressions on this thing, it is built to last. This thing is heavy duty, way heavier duty than the, uh, the stock skid plate for sure. This is gonna be a nice upgrade to the truck for protection underneath there. So what you're gonna get in the box is the skid plate itself, of course, bag of hardware, a couple pieces that look like this, half moon pieces, I'll show you where they go to. Um, the other reason I like this skid plate, guys, just so you know, just like the TRD skid plate, it does have the door for the oil filter. So when you're doing your oil changes, you don't have to remove the entire skid plate anymore. Um, but just overall, first impression, this thing is, is really heavy duty and, and very stout. Gonna give the truck a lot of protection underneath there. So huge upgrade from the factory for sure. All right, so let's get the factory skid plate removed and I'll show you a little side-by-side -side real quick when I get it removed and then we'll get this uh, the RCI thrown up on the truck. All right, guys, just wanted to give you a quick comparison between these two skid plates side by side. I mean, obviously, you can see the RCI skid plate is much bigger as far as lengthwise, but the biggest thing that sticks out to me is the thickness. I'm not exactly sure. I'll, throw, I'll take a picture and throw it up on the screen there for you. I'm not exactly sure of the thickness of the RCI. It looks maybe like a quarter inch aluminum. I think that's what it looks like. Um, but the, the stock, the factory Toyota skid plate, my God, it's literally like, I want to say paper thin. That's the biggest thing that stands out to me as far as, um, you know, how heavy duty that RCI skid plate actually is. So side by side, you guys can clearly see the difference and the thickness is what really stands out to me. That's going to give the underside of the truck much more protection, um, not only lengthwise, but just the thickness of it is, is it, the difference is incredible. So. Um, I, didn't show, I didn't show you the removal of the factory skid plate only because my skid plate is going to look a little different than yours. I did have to modify my factory skid plate. I didn't have to, but I chose to because of my NFAB MRDS bumper. But in order to get the factory skid plate off, it's very, very simple. When you get up underneath the truck, this is the underside of the skid plate that you're going to be seeing. So there's going to be five 12 millimeter bolts that have to come out. And there are they are right here, here that middle bigger hole down the bottom and then this hole here and that hole here. So when you're underneath the truck, if you look up in those holes, you're gonna clearly see the 12 millimeter bolts. You will need a little bit of an extension for your ratchet to get up there and reach the, um, the, the especially the bottom three. The top two you can probably get at just with a standard ratchet, but you'll need an extension for those bottom three. And then the other thing you'll need to do and again, you can't miss it when you get up underneath your truck. I trim this part off, but there's going to be another, there's going to be a, an upper section to your skid plate where there's going to be three Phillips head screws that also have to be removed. And that's if you have the factory Toyota bumper and you never modified your skid plate. So very simple to do. You'll know exactly what you're looking at when you get up under there. You really can't miss it. So it's just those three Phillips head screws that you don't even see on mine because I trim that section off. And then there's the five 12 millimeter bolts. Once you have all of that out, the only other thing I'll show you, it does hook on to the bumper with two hooks. There's one here, and then this one over here actually came off when I trimmed it. But these two hooks, once you have all of that hardware removed, the three Phillips head screws, the five 12 millimeter bolts, all you'll have to do is you'll have to lift the skid plate up a little bit and just pop these hooks over the little lip that they sit on. All right, so that's how you get the factory skid plate out. It's very simple. Once you get up under the truck, there was really no reason for me to show you that. It's very simple to do. All right, so let me get this RCI skid in place and I'll show you guys where all the hardware goes and how we get that mounted up. All right, guys, so I got all the hardware separated just to show you real quick before we get up under the truck and get this thing bolted down. You're gonna get three different size bolts. You're gonna get three quarter inch by three quarter inch carriage bolts, look like that. They're gonna come with um, flat washers, locking washers, and nylon locking nuts. Where these three are gonna go, when you remove the factory skid plate, the three Phillips head screws that you removed, that's where these three bolts are gonna go into the RCI skid. 
So if you're looking at the RCI skid, there's a hole, a small hole here, small in the middle, and a small hole up top. That's where those three, um, so it's one, two, three. That's where those three carriage bolts are gonna go with the appropriate hardware, the um, nylon nuts and the flat washers. Um, the two bigger carriage bolts, you, you can't really mess this up because you get three of the small ones, two of the big ones, and then five of the medium sized bolts over there. The two long ones, long carriage bolts right here, they're gonna go in the back of the skid plate. There's two slots back there. You can't miss them. They're the only two back there. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but again, you can't miss them when you're looking at the skid plate. Um, I'll show you where they go once we get up under the truck, but basically all you're gonna do, you're gonna take, once you have the RCI up to the truck, you're gonna pop these carriage bolts up through the back like that. Then you're gonna take, I'm sorry, then you're gonna take these half moon um, washers. I'll show you where they go, but that would be the first thing that it's gonna go through. Then it's gonna be a flat washer, a locking washer, and then of course the nut. All right, so that's how, that's the order and that's how you would secure the back to the longer carriage bolts. And again, I'll show you where that is actually on the truck when we get up underneath there. The other five bolts back here that look like this, these are 13 millimeter bolts. These are gonna go in the same exact spots where you removed the factory five bolts. Now, the factory bolts on the skid plate, the factory skid plate, they were 12 millimeter bolts that we removed. These are 13 millimeter heads, just so you know. But all you're gonna do is you're gonna take these and put them right up you're going to use the washer, of course. And then on the RCI skid, there's one, two, three, four, five. That's where these are going to go. So you're just going to put the washer on the, on the nut, or I'm sorry, on the bolt, pop it up through, screw them into the truck. The only other part, the only other step that you may or may not have to do, these black washers that you see here, I have five of them, they go with these five bolts. All right, and the reason I need those is because I do have my, um, I, my, I have my front diff dropped on the truck because of my lift. All right, so if you do have to use these spacers, very simple to do. It's gonna go between the truck and the skid plate. And what I mean by that is, you're just gonna set them in these spots here, all five spots. And then you're gonna, again, just take the bolt with the washer, pop it up through the skid plate, and through the spacer and screw it into the truck. It's just gonna give you a little space and it's gonna lower that the RCI skid plate just enough to clear your, your diff. All right, so it's very simple. You can't really mess this up. So let me get this um, up to the truck and we'll get it bolted in place. The only other tip I'll give you, if you're doing this install by yourself, it can get a little awkward and hard just because of the size of the skid plate. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a jack underneath the rear of the skid plate while I'm securing the front to the truck. And then of course I'll work my way back. Once I get back there, I'll remove the jack and, and, and tighten down the, the back end. All right, just a little tip there if you're doing this install by yourself. If you have an extra set of hands, you don't need to worry about that. But I am doing this by myself, so. All right, so let me get this up to the truck and we'll get it uh, bolted in place. All right guys, hopefully you can see this. I have as much light up underneath the truck as I can get. So I have all five bolts. I took my NFAB skid plate off just to make this install a little bit easier. If you have this MRDS um, front bumper, just go ahead and take that skid plate off, get it out of your way. You can do it with it on, but it's easier with it off. If you don't have the NFAB MRDS, obviously you don't have to worry about it, but I have the five 13 millimeter bolts started um, and I'll put a couple pictures on your screen there. I do have those spacers between the truck and the RCI. I'll take a couple pictures and show you, you know, how that should look for you. Don't tighten those five down. As you can see, I can still, I don't want to slide it too much because I don't want to scratch it um, with the jack here. I, I used the jack back here to hold up the rear of the skid plate while I secured the front. Um, but again, I didn't tighten those five down. I just have them in place. So now back here in the rear, this is where you're gonna take the longer carriage bolts. And when you look at the cross member, there's only one hole that this will go straight up through. There's only one set of holes that align on the top, I'm sorry, on the bottom and the top of the cross member. It should all line up for you. So you're gonna go ahead and pop the carriage bolt up through there like that. Then you're gonna take your half moon 
pop it down on there first. And I'm gonna have to push it up just a little bit. After the half moon, it's gonna be a flat washer. Then a lock washer. And then of course, the nut. All right, so I'm not gonna tighten these down either. I'm just gonna, just enough to get it started. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the other side. And then I'll go back up to the front. So again, bolt goes through, half moon, flat washer, lock washer, and nut. All right, so now that I have everything secured and started, now I'll go back, I'll make sure the skid plate is perfectly centered where I want it. It does have some play. You can slide it forward or backwards. I'm going to slide mine as far back as possible only because of the NFAB skid plate. They're going to be very close to each other, um, if not touching. So I'm going to slide mine all the way back and uh, I'll get all seven bolts secured down tightly and I'll show you guys the, the finished product. So, all right, hang tight. All right, guys, we got it all finished up. Everything's buttoned up. The NFAB skid plate is back on. So just a couple things I wanted to show you, give you a look at the finished product here. Love it. This skid plate is definitely a huge upgrade, as I mentioned. You can see the underneath there. Gorgeous finish on it and just so much more heavy duty than the uh, the stock. So just a couple things. I'll give you a look at those spacers in case you're unfamiliar with where they go. You can see they're right up here in between the skid plate and the truck and right there where I'm pointing to. Hopefully you can see them okay. And you're gonna use one of them spacers only if you have your diff, your front diff dropped with a lift, you'll use one of them spacers in all five spots with those 13 millimeter bolts. All right, so you would use them three and then the two in the front here, this one and that one over there. All right, you'd put the spacer up between the truck and uh, the skid plate. And that lowers the RCI down a half inch to clear your diff. Now, speaking of lowering this the rci one thing i did want to show you with this aftermarket bumper you can see how close the nfab skid plate and the rci skid plate actually are they're basically just butted up against each other they're just about touching um i don't even know if you can get a piece of paper through there that's how close they are one issue there because if you didn't have to use those spacers on the rci and drop it down because of your diff this part of the RCI would go up above the NFAB and it would just sit up above there, no problem at all. Because I had to use them spacers and drop my RCI skid plate a little bit, I have this where they're just kind of butted up against each other. The only reason this is actually working for me is I did put on um, bumper shims from Boss Off-Road and that brought my front bumper a half inch forward. If I didn't have those shims and this NFAB skid plate was a half inch back where it originally was, I don't think that would have worked. I really don't think there was any way I could have got that to go. So just something to keep in mind for you. If you do have this aftermarket bumper and you're thinking about going to the RCI, I don't know if you'll have this issue or not, but as you can clearly see, my skid plates are bumped up against each other and uh, without them bumper shims on, on, the, on the truck, I don't think there's any way that would have actually worked. So again, if you don't have to use those spacers, you should be okay because the RCI will be a little bit higher. It'll go right up above the NFAB. Um, but yeah, just something to keep in mind for you. All right. So awesome skid plate. Love it. Thrilled with the purchase. Love the trap door. It just makes it so much easier to do your oil changes without having to remove the entire skid plate. On the other side where the oil pan is, it has a little cutout just to make it give you easy access to the oil pan to drain it. Um, so yeah, everything about the skid plate, I, I gotta be honest, I, I think it's well worth the upgrade. So you guys can decide for yourself, but in my opinion, definitely worth it. So as always guys, questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.